our greatest defender. When we are falsely accused, we should first and foremost allow God to defend us. Here's Gene. As we've seen, Moses was definitely falsely accused by his brother and his sister. And we see that uh, played out very dramatically in the record. And notice it says, Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, the three of them, You three come out to the tent of meeting. And wow, think about that for a moment. The God of the universe, <laughs> the God who created the universe, said, I want you three people to come right out here in front of the tabernacle because I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to deal with this sin. And so they come out. And I'm sure that there were people who are watching this situation because this was not a secret. People knew that this complaining was going on, this statement of jealousy by Miriam and Aaron. So God brings them out. And so the three of them went out. And then the Lord descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. Now imagine, they heard God's voice speak to these three, come to the tent of meeting, they go, and then God descends. And uh, then He singles out uh, Miriam and Aaron, while everybody's watching, I'm sure. Because this was a visible situation that was, could have been seen by many, many of the Israelites. And when the two of them came forward, God said, listen to what I say. If there is a prophet among you from the Lord, I make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. But in this particular situation, he says, not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. And there, when he says my household, Perhaps God is referring to Moses' family as well in a specific way. You have accused Moses' wife. You have been jealous. And Moses, my servant, he is faithful in all my household. And then he differentiates between prophecy and speaking to people through visions and dreams with speaking directly. And this was very unique in God's scheme of things. Very unique in history. Because God said, I speak with him, that is Moses, directly, openly, and not in riddles or dreams or visions. He sees the form of the Lord. He wasn't allowed to see God face to face because no one can see God and live. He sees the form of the Lord. So why were you not afraid, speaking to Aaron and, and to his sister Miriam? So why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the Lord's anger burned against them, and he left. In other words, he ascended once again in that pillar of, of the cloud. Now, what an incredible confrontation in this particular situation. And that's why this principle reads that God is a great defender. And God was angry. And so He dealt with the situation. And of course, leprosy came on Miriam, which indicates that she was probably the instigator. And Aaron went along with it. Just like he went along with the, you know, the uh, building of that golden calf. And, and didn't take a stand. But I'll say this for Aaron, if you go into the context, when God disciplined Miriam for whatever she did in instigating this, Miriam or Aaron stepped up to the plate and said, Lord, Lord, we did this. He took responsibility, and that's growth on Aaron's part. And of course, God listened, and after a few days, the leprosy left. But uh, here we have God dealing with this situation as our greatest defender. And Moses allowed God to do it. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking of Isaiah. And when we're tempted to retaliate against those who falsely accuse us, 
And that certainly is a temptation. Uh, I think we need to think of the Lord Jesus. Because in this prophecy in Isaiah 53, 7, we read, He was oppressed, Jesus Christ was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. Think about that. You go into the Gospels, you'll see that's true. Even when they asked Him certain questions, He was silent in terms of who He really was. And like a lamb led to the slaughter, and like a sheep silent before her shearers, He did not open His mouth. And here we have an incredible example where we're to imitate Jesus Christ because of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, the reflection and response question, however, gives us a balance. And the question says, when is it appropriate to defend ourselves and when should we allow God to defend us? In other words, there are times when we can defend ourselves. It's not inappropriate. But there are times when we need to be relatively silent and let God defend us. Acts Principle 44, we looked at that. Uh, the context here was uh, uh, Paul being falsely accused in an incredible way. And, uh, and here the principle simply reads, when we're falsely accused, there are times we should not hesitate to defend ourselves. That's the other side. Paul defended himself against false accusations. But there are times when we should allow God to be our defender. I shared with you earlier the experience that I had in relationship to anger, uh, in terms of what I felt was uh, unrighteousness. In fact, I had written a letter to two very prominent people exposing this sin in this man's life. And fortunately, I passed it by two people that are very wise, and they said, Gene, don't do that. It's not the right time. Because if you write that letter, it will be interpreted as perhaps self-justification, self-protection, retaliation. This is not the right time. Just trust God in that situation. Now, in some respects, you could say it's not wrong to defend myself. But in this particular situation, it would have been misinterpreted. And so I, though I didn't feel good about their advice, I followed their advice, and it turned out to be the very best advice, because when God stepped into that situation, He defended me in a way that I could never have defended it. And the sin was revealed and dealt with in a way that perhaps never would have happened if I had gotten ahead of the Lord in what He was doing in this person's life. There's a lot to that story, but I want to tell you, it taught me a great lesson that there's a time to be silent. There's a time to defend ourselves, and we need wisdom from God. In this case, Moses did not defend himself, and God stepped into that situation and defended him in ways that were absolutely amazing.